Enrico Palermo, Head of the Australian Space Agency at the Australian Stand here in Milan at IAC 2024. Thank you very much for joining us again on Australian Space TV. Yeah, always great to catch up, Chris. Uh, look, and there's a lot, to, a lot of news coming here. Obviously, IAC 2025 in Sydney, so hence uh, the, the cool, we'll warm up. And we wanted to interview under the Southern Sky Infinity Room. I think I'll take some video for some overlay for this interview. Excellent. Um, and you've also been appointed to the IAF Bureau uh, Vice President, so I think that's also putting Australia on the international stage in the space sector. Maybe just from your mind, uh, some early takeaways from Milan here uh, in the lead up to, to Sydney and some of the key announcements coming through that uh, are top of mind for you. Yeah, thanks Chris. I mean, the, our wonderful hosts here in Italy, I think have demonstrated again that the IAC, which we're hosting Sydney next year, is the draw card to pull together the world's global space community. Yep. So I think uh, the energy we've seen and the interest we've seen in Sydney, uh, where we'll host it, and really with a focus on our region, um, has really resonated uh, yep. in the community here. I was certainly very proud to be elected as a Vice President of the IAF's Bureau. This is a chance to really have a, 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 an enduring aspect to us hosting IAC next year. The IAF is the world's largest civil space federation. Right. Uh, all the world's uh, major space agencies come together um, to see how we can advance space for our, our combined security, our combined safety and our combined prosperity. The other one is, uh, this is my first uh, IAC and it's an incredible industry in terms of the size and, and scale of this uh, compared to say what we might see in Colorado Springs and the like. Um, there's some smart sets under uh, MOU with Greece uh, and the Hellenic Centre as well. Any others there that you think uh, puts Australia on the international stage in terms of what they're doing uh, or within our region as well? We've got Asia Pacific uh, Regional Space Agency Forum coming up in Perth as well, which is a good lead up to Sydney as it is. But yeah, just where do you see uh, the Australian sector and their international partnerships? Any other takeaways here or highlights for you in, as we lead up to Sydney? So we've been proud to lead actually a large Team Australia contingent here this year, across government a small element, but you know industry and academia, uh, it's well over 100 Australians here, yeah. uh, delivering technical presentations, being part of um, public sessions. Um, and so I think Australia's brand here has been very strong. And again, that is great ahead of Sydney next year. There has been some notable announcements. Uh, today, the Australian government uh, launched its uh, consultation on a sustainability of space activities policy. This is important. Um, one of the constant, I guess, threads uh, here amongst uh, my fellow space leaders is the need to make space activities more sustainable yep. uh, and to protect those critical assets we rely on every day uh, for services on Earth. Weather, navigation, uh, I think you're well across uh, how we use space. Um, and so having a domestic policy is really important so we can continue to activate on the international stage for what is a global problem. And so that's a big announcement uh, by the Australian government and, and we're, we're keen to hear, 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 uh, hear feedback from your, um, your audiences uh, yep. as part of that. Uh, another thing that you'll, you'll see come out shortly is a historic uh, first authorisation of a commercial return into Australia. So I'll right. leave the details uh, to the entity, but that is a first, another first for Australia. And off the back of the TSA, this particular authorisation didn't need the TSA, yep. but shows you Australia can be a leader in the region for launch but also returns yeah. and returns is really interesting because uh, there's a growing understanding of the benefits for pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, modeling physical processes on orbit and then returning that to earth and, yeah. and an unpopulated coastline and others really open opportunities for that the other one is uh, well the other few is India UK uh, and the like uh, there and you mentioned the TSA uh, any developments there, UK Space Bridge or with India as well, there's some funded companies coming through, some other MOUs being signed by Australian, mm -hmm. Australian and Indian com uh, space companies as well. But yeah, just fostering those relationships with uh, major partners. Yeah, we're blessed to have uh, deep relationships with, with many of our partners around the region and around the world. So here, the Australian Space Agency led a comprehensive bilateral program, well over 30 to 40 meetings uh, this week right. uh, with our counterparts, uh, all signalling intent to, to come to Australia next year. And it's been a chance to, to reflect. I was recently in India for the Bengaluru Space Expo, and, and we've seen that uh, relationship mature industry to industry and also government to government. 
um, and just yeah, very warm uh, welcoming arms from the world. Well, you mentioned uh, 40 odd meetings. I'm sure there's been even more, Enrico. Um, but thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us today. Uh, we'll see you in Perth uh, next month for the Indo Pacific Space and Earth uh, Conference as well, alongside the Asia Pacific Regional Space Agency Forum. Uh, so thank you very much again for joining us on Australia and Space TV and enjoy the rest of the last couple of days here in Milan at IAC 2024. See you in Sydney. And I'll see you in Perth as well. Thank you. Take Good care. Day.